Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 4. If both parents are carriers of thalassemia, which is an autosomal recessive disorder, what are the chances of pregnancy resulting in an affected child? Okay, so let's look at the genotypes of the parents. So let's say this is the father and this is the mother. So here both the parents are carriers for thalassemia. So thalassemia is autosomal recessive disorder. Autosomal means it has nothing to do with the sex chromosomes. Okay. So let us say that the father has capital R small r. Similarly, the mother has capital R small r where we say that the capital R denotes the normal gene and the small r denotes the defective one. So any individual who has both small r's would be an affected individual because this is a recessive disorder. So the disease happens only when uh, the defective gene is present in the recessive condition. So only when it is present in this condition, small r, small r, only then that individual will get affected. So in this case, the, both the parents, they are carriers. That means both of them have a defective gene, but not affected. That means the defective gene is not present in the uh, homozygous condition. Okay, so in this case, what are the possible gametes? Capital R, small r, possible gametes here again, capital R, small r. So let us look at the possibility of the next generation. So this would be capital R, capital R, capital R, small r, capital R, small r, small r, small r. So what is this? Capital R, capital R is, this is normal. So here this children would be normal. These children would again be normal, but they would be carriers of for thalassemia. Whereas this one would be affected. So what, what are the chances of pregnancy resulting in an affected, affected child? That means what percentage of the total children might get affected? So one out of four children, the possibility is that one out of four children might get affected. So one out of four, when you convert it into percentage, it comes out to be 25%. So there is a 25% possibility that a child might get affected. Question number five, ABO blood groups in humans are controlled by the gene. It has three alleles, IA, IB and small i. Since there are three different alleles, six different genotypes are possible. How many phenotypes can occur? So just now we were talking about this table, right? Where these are the possible alleles that might be contributed by each of the parents. And in this case, now in each of these cases, these are the possible genotypes. So how many different types of genotypes do you have? So IAIA is one genotype, IAI is one genotype, IAIB is another genotype, IBIB is yet another genotype, IBI is one more genotype, IBIB is the same which is repeated here, II is one more and that's it. So how many possible genotypes you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are six kinds of genotypes which are possible. Now how many kinds of phenotypes can occur? So the phenotypes in this case would be blood group A, A, this would be AB, this would be B, this would be B. This would again be AB, this would be O, this would be A and B. So what are the different, how many types of blood groups exist? One is A, one is AB, one is B and one is O. So basically there are four types of phenotypes which are possible. Question number six. The genotype of a plant showing the dominant phenotype can be determined by test cross, dihybrid cross, pedigree analysis or back cross. Okay, so did you understand the question? The genotype of a plant showing the dominant phenotype. Now let us talk about a tall plant. Okay, so this is a plant which shows the dominant phenotype because tall is the dominant phenotype, right? 
So tall, which is capital T, is the dominant phenotype. So this plant shows the dominant phenotype. The plant is tall. But how do we know whether the plant is capital T, capital T, or the plant is capital T, small t? So how do, how do we very surely know about the genotype of a plant which shows the dominant phenotypes? The plant is showing dominant phenotype. But how do we know the genotype of this plant? So for this purpose, we perform test cross. So test cross is that type of a cross where an organism in question is crossed with an organism that is homozygous for recessive trait. So basically in this case, what we will do is in test cross, what we do is this is unknown. It, it can either be capital T, capital T or it can be capital T, small t. So what we do is we cross this with homozygous recessive type that is small t, small t. Now in if it is capital T, small t. So this could be possibility number one. So in this case, what are the outputs that you would get? So in this case, the next generation would be capital T, small t, capital T, small t, small t, small t and small t, small t. So this would be the output. That means in this case, the output would be 50% tall plants and 50% short or dwarf plants. Right? Whereas the second possibility could be capital T, capital T. So if we cross this with small t, small t, what is the output that we will get? So the output will be all capital T, small t. That means in this case, all the plants would be tall. So how do we find out what is the genotype? So when you cross this unknown plant, unknown means the plant with unknown genotype. When you cross it with homozygous recessive type, if you get all tall plants, that means the genotype of this plant is capital T, capital T. If you get 50% tall plants and 50% dwarf plants, that means the genotype of this plant is capital T, small t. So by crossing it with homozygous recessive trait, you can find out the genotype of this unknown organism and this type of cross is called test cross. So here the correct option would be test cross. Now many a time students get confused with back cross. So just for your information I want to mention that back cross is always crossing a hybrid with one of the parents. Hybrid means for example, capital T, small t, this is a hybrid. So anything which is heterozygous is hybrid. So when you cross it with one of the parents, that means this is crossed with capital T, capital T. So that is a back cross. Or when this is crossed with small t, small t, that is a back cross. So when you cross a hybrid with one of the parents, that is back cross. So basically, you can say that test cross is also a type of back cross. Because in test cross, what you do, you cross it with the homozygous recessive individuals. Homozygous recessive individual is also one of the parents, right? So that way so you can say that test cross is a type of back cross. But here in this case, the exact answer would be test cross. When you have test cross as an option, so that would be the right option in this case. So just to uh, clarify your any doubts that might be there in your mind about test cross and back cross, that's why I mentioned this. Now, I am sure all of you know what is pedigree analysis. So this pedigree analysis is just a pattern or it, it is just a uh, process in which we make charts or diagrams to study the uh, appearance of phenotypic traits in an organism and its ancestors from one generation to the next generation. So it, it is a totally different thing. When you talk about a dye hybrid cross, this is Di means two. So it is a cross between two varieties that differ in two observable traits. For example, you remember the Mendel's second set of experiments where he took round yellow seeds. You remember the round yellow seeds, capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y, crossed with small r, small r, small y, small y, where he took round yellow seeds and crossed them with green wrinkled seeds. So basically, he considered two different traits, that is the color of the seed and the shape of the seeds. Right? So they were two observable traits. So he, he crossed two different varieties that differ in two observable traits. So that type of cross is called dihybrid cross. 
So just to give you an idea about the other options, but here in this case, when you want to find out the genotype of an unknown plant, you always go for a test cross where you cross that unknown plant with homozygous recessive form. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.